Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. On this program, we have conversations with cutting-edge thought leaders and change makers who share their knowledge and their wisdom. Uh, they do this to help all of us find solutions to the toughest health challenges we're facing today. Uh, please join me in giving thanks to our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, who has been making this show possible for the past three of the past four years. It's been running. Uh, to learn more about New Roots and their wonderful line of products, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. And as I mentioned last month, today's a particularly special and poignant program because it's my final live broadcast um, before I'm taking a hiatus from the show. Uh, the great news is that you'll still be able to hear recordings of all of my previous shows on my YouTube channel, my TeresaNicasio.com website. And I just learned a couple days ago it's also going to be on the HealthyLife.net subscriptions program for all the past four years of shows. So later in the show, I'll be uh, sharing with you the lowdown of what I'm going to be up to and how you can still access these shows and all kinds of other good stuff, including tons of other free wellness resources. So stick around for that later. I'd like to dedicate today's program. Uh, it's a different kind of a dedication today, uh, but I'd like to dedicate it to HealthyLife.net for its commitment to educate and instill hope for a better and a more positive world, especially in these days where sometimes it can feel pretty overwhelming and and, um, and there can be some negativity. So this is a this is a, a happy place or a, and a hopeful place. And I just want to say it's been an absolute privilege to be part of this team. And I'm forever grateful to the founder and GM of the network, Linda McKenzie. Uh, she reached out to me, um, gosh, four years ago, and and also for the endless hard work of the network producer, Jay Cruz, who is right here with us every moment, and he is he is a rock star in his in his uh, what he does and pulling it all together. But I also want to take a moment to thank and dedicate um, uh, this show to my beloved friend, and she's a former guest show, uh, Jane Gruber. You may have heard her. She was on a couple times before. And um, Jane has been, she's been an unbelievable angel in my life, and um, is with undying support for the vision of this show and for being the wind beneath my wings um, these past four years. And her behind-the-scenes help with the show has literally, it's just been invaluable. And so thank you, Jane. If you'd like to listen again or want to share with others any of these shows, remember that you can and you can learn more about um, the, the guests, hear their interviews, see their other YouTubes, read articles by them, um, as well as access tons of other uh, free wellness resources anytime, 24-7, on my website at TeresaNicasio.com. That's T-H-E-R-E-S-A, N as in Nancy, I-C-A, two S's, S-S-I-O.com. <clears throat> I've got a little frog this morning. Um, for today's, today's program, though, we have the privilege, I'm so happy about this, we have the privilege of hearing from the Executive Director of Touch Time International, um, the award-winning licensed speech and language pathologist, Dr. Elaine Fogel-Schneider. She's going to be with us here talking about, or she is with us here talking about the healing power of touch. Um, she is, Dr. Elaine is a leading expert in communication, infant massage, child development, and parenting, um, and she's just a downright wonderful human being. I'm very happy to share her with you. 
And given the new six feet apart world we're living in and the rise in touch deprivation we're now seeing and, and many of you may be you know, really struggling with uh, around this COVID pandemic, um, Dr. Lane's knowledge and guidance couldn't be more timely for all of us. Welcome to the show, Elaine. <clears throat> Gosh, after all this time talking about having you on the show to talk about the importance of touch, uh, it's really wonderful that you could be here at this particularly so tender time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, you have a very, you know, quite the quite the resume. As as those of you, when you can check it all on the website, you'll see. You know, Elaine's done a ton of things, got tons of awards and and recognition and such. But. But your path, it's, it's really been an interesting career. And, and I wonder if you could sh- first you know, share with our listeners a bit about how your path wound around and led you to becoming um, so passionate about touch. Well, I think I, I look back at my childhood, and um, in the days that I grew up, we, we had um, parents that were asking children to be seen and not heard and that type mm-hmm. of thing, and Back then, it was, uh, I can remember still hearing in my, um, in my home, uh, you know, don't touch, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that. Mm. So it's, it's pretty funny in a way that I would have, um, started looking at touch as, uh, an incredible, um, sense of our body and looking at the importance of touch with children as I worked with children with developmental disabilities. As a speech and language pathologist, um, I wanted to do more for their families to help them become the best parent that they could be. And I actually discovered the field of touch over 20 years ago uh, to bring that into my practice, helping parents and children uh, because of the so many benefits that it could bring, especially for the parents, not having to always be that medical technician that they have to be when they have kids with special needs. It turned out that here is a way that they could actually use infant massage as a tool to help bond with their babies, to help see the baby that they have in front of them rather than the disability. And so it brought me into the world of touch and the importance of touch for all children, whether those having disabilities or whether children are born without them, the importance of bonding and having secure attachments. And so that's, I guess, I felt deeply and passionately, especially coming from a place where I could still hear those words, don't touch, don't touch, um, right. and keeping myself away from the environment and from ex- exploration. So I didn't want that to happen for other children and parents. Oh, that's really that's really beautiful, and, and it's kind of the ultimate uh, rebellion. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, in some ways, but for, for all the right reasons. And, um, and I had noticed that a long time ago you had, I had asked you for, like, ideas of, of books you recommend and that, and there was one called Touch that I remember buying, I, I think, in the 1980s that, um, that was, was really kind of a landmark. And, and uh, you know, can you talk a little bit more, because uh, there's been a lot of research now about touch, and, and uh, can you share with, with us, because, you know, we, so we think about touch, I think, you know, touchy-feely and, and, and you know, it, it, you know is of course, touching things like you're talking about and, or don't touch this, don't touch that. Um, but, but touch is a very interesting, you know, neurologically and, and physiologically, um, there's, there's a lot to it. Can you share with our listeners a little bit about some of your favorite research about, about why touch is so important? Oh, I'd love to do that. Um, there is so much information out in the field about touch. Um, going back um, to uh, the, there was an experiment done by Harry Harlow back in the 50s where mm-hmm. he looked at Reese's monkeys and he was looking at what would they um, value more, the comfort of a wired mesh object that looked like a mother but it was it was covered covered in some soft cloth or would they go for a a mesh object that looked like a mother with a bottle with milk so he was looking at what would the rhesus monkeys do when given the opportunity of going for something comforting or something 
that was nourishing the milk. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that with his experiments, they found that the monkeys were go for what was comforting more than what was nourishing by the milk. And so that was one of the major studies that came out back then that showed that uh, we as mammals, our own, you know, innate, um, we would go for something that was soft and comforting. And so the idea about touch, uh, we see that as a real important part of human growth and development. Um, also, we see studies that came out when we looked at the, when the Cold War ended and children were found in Romanian orphan, orphanages, um, we discovered then, too, that many of the children that were there um, were actually very much medically challenged, developmentally delayed, because we discovered that uh, the children that were in the orphanages rarely got any touch. As a matter of fact, there is uh, one uh, story that I can love to share with your audience, talking about the um, they they took a little study and they saw that uh, there were some children that were actually doing better than the others when they were found in the orphanage, and uh, they discovered that the reason that some were doing better physically, emotionally, was that they were closer to the door of the orphanages of the big room. So when the nurses came to do feeding, those were the babies that were probably, they were touched more than the babies that were at the end of the line to get the feeding. Wow. And they discovered that those that. babies had less challenges than the others. Well, it's an interest. I never knew that twist of the story. But, but um, I, you know, I know that and many of you who are listening may have heard about this and how, they, when they did do the study, which is kind of a cruel study uh, where, they, where they kind of randomly assigned which children they would then see what would happen if they touched some and then they didn't touch the others, they just carried on like they normally did, that literally you know, the failure to thrive that you were talking about, uh, those that weren't touched, and even many of them died. Uh, so they, you know, their weight wouldn't go up, but then many of them actually died, whereas those that were touched uh, were more likely to thrive and do better. Exactly. I mean, that, that was uh, back, there was a German emperor that actually did that study back in the 1200s, and yes, they discovered that those were the children that actually were, um, they didn't make it at all. They withered away and they died. So, you know, yeah. like touch is really, it's a necessity in life. It's not a frill. It's a... I think, are, are you there? I think we just lost our guest for a moment. Um, um, are, are you there, Elaine? Okay. Yeah, we'll have to wait for Elaine to call back in. But, um, but yeah, so this is really, um, really profound, this, this concept of touch. And, um, and as we wait for her, I wanted to share with you a little bit about why I wanted to have uh, Dr. Elaine on because, you know, I'm a psychologist, and as we are here during the pandemic, uh, and I'm, I'm still seeing clients, although I'm actually just I'm actually talking with clients uh, auditorily on the phone. Many people have been struggling, particularly during the the darkness of the the biggest part of the lockdown, um, because the the lack of touch, the lack of of connection. Um, which we can all appreciate with the COVID virus and, and some of the implications of that. But, but in terms of the emotional impacts of this, it's been really huge. So uh, Dr. Lane's been doing a lot of work on prevention and helping, helping children um, in terms of their development. Um, but that uh, I'm also, what I want to ask when she comes back is, what about adults and, uh, and some of the research around touch with adults? but also what we might be able to do, um, what are some alternatives that we have, uh, particularly if we don't have the privilege of living with someone um, or having access to touch. So, okay, perfect. Hi, Elaine. Hi, I'm so uh, sorry. We just, we just lost you, no worries. <laughs> I so, saw that. So yeah. that's okay. So I was just, I was just sharing with, with our listeners a, a little bit more about why I wanted to invite you here and, and, you know, during this pandemic and all that and, and how you're a specialist with working with children and child development. Um, and that, uh, um, but one thing I was wondering is 
because uh, I haven't seen as much, and I'm, you know, I've, I've certainly been experiencing it with my clients, uh, experiencing the, the touch deprivation. Has there been much research with regard to the importance of touch for adults? Because I know with children it's pretty obvious with the, the, the Thrive and Value to Thrive research, but has there been much research mm-hmm. with adults that you know of? Yes, there has been research with adults. They've actually done some studies. Um, I believe out of Duke University, actually, where they took um, par- they took adults, um, some that were married, and they did a study where um, they gave them an opportunity to do some problem solving over um, some issue that they would have to deal with in their family or their married life, and it came out as part of the study that those individuals that were able to hold hands for like um, several minutes a day were able to problem solve their problems more easily than those couples that did not engage in hand holding. Uh, So I thought that was a real interesting study showing the importance of uh, relationship building for being able to have those moments together where hand holding takes place. We also see from a physical level as well that all the studies for adults from looking at massage therapy and looking at the importance of um, skin-to-skin touch and how it helps to reduce anxiety, it helps to reduce depression, Uh, it's more relaxing for an individual. All of the nerves, the parasympathetic nervous system gets um, relaxed, we have uh, the hormones in our body, there's the cortisol, which is our stress hormone. With uh, studies, we see that that hormone is reduced. Uh, people can sleep better um, with the melatonin that's released. They also have other uh, hormones and endo- uh, endocrines such as the oxytocin and the serotonin, you know, our cuddle hormone, our feel-good hormone. So in the touching, we see that these Chemicals are released throughout the body. Our brain houses so many different memories, and we're also finding that those the parts of the brain have reduction in the stress hormones. So we find that those studies are also showing how people, adults, can feel better, can feel more in tune with themselves, in tune with nature, can have a calming effect by having those nurturing touches, the nurturing. Yeah. Well, there was that MRI research that I just loved so much. I forget what the what the psychologist's name was who had done it. He worked in a VA hospital, but I'm sure you've seen it. And, um, and Dr. Sue Johnson has done some research uh, based on his work and uh, as well, look at functional MRIs looking at the brain and also people's reports of pain. Um, and when they're holding mm-hmm. the hand of someone that they love, how the, uh, literally their their brain uh, responds differently. It doesn't like you know, you know act like fireworks. Um, uh, you know when when there's the pain and the fear of pain, and so the anxiety goes down. But also their their reports of how painful things are is actually significantly reduced uh, when they are holding the hand of someone who they they love. And and so you know I, I will, I'm sure we'll get more into some of this uh, as we go into the next segment as well. But at least we could start on this because I want for those of you listening thinking, oh, you know, oh that's great. Well, I don't have anybody to hold a hand with. Um, we're gonna. I, I want us to talk a little bit about um, what you know what we can do and about this pandemic and what are some alternatives. And Dr. Elaine is going to share some ideas of some some ways to still be able to. Um, mitigate the, the challenges of, of touch deprivation um, when um, you know when we don't have it when, you know during this pandemic when six feet away it's hard, kind of hard to physically touch so uh, so um, so you know the solutions of this are is really important but um, yeah I, I guess we'll just jump into that a little bit you, you, you know what are some of your thoughts about some of the the ideas that that people can utilize to to, to make it a little easier to not be able to touch. Yes, I think I think so many of us are all feeling that deprivation, uh, especially um, now that we're not supposed to even you know shake a hand when we see someone. We're not supposed to hug anyone that's not in our own family that we haven't been with. 
So some of the techniques or some of the ideas um, recently had an article that was uh, in Thrive Global actually about different ways that we can handle this type of um, distancing. And some things are, you know, if anyone has a pet at home, um, Mm -hmm. pets are actually really wonderful to have. uh, They, you know, for so many people, it's uh, the only contact they have with another living thing if they're living alone. And uh, massaging a pet um, mm-hmm. is a wonderful way uh, that you can actually bring in that touch sense and you can um, find a way that you enliven your own connection with someone else. And it doesn't have to be a person. You know, it can actually be an animal. So that's that's one of the ways that is um, is a real easy way that we can do that massage for uh, getting in touch with ourselves and getting in touch with an animal. Uh, so that's a real wonderful way. Um, also, just giving yourself a, your own massage. I always think of you know when you're taking a shower or in a bath, uh, you're actually massaging yourself. Many people don't even think about it. You know, you're just in there doing your thing. But actually, you're in a you're actually massaging yourself. So it's important that you know just um, to use anything that's soothing. That uh, some people like to go take their own bath. They go put their um, you know bubbles in their in their different uh, fragrances and such. Lavender is nice. But again, using a bathtub, using the shower to massage yourself. So you're giving yourself a massage um, uh, is another yeah. way to make that contact. Um, Perfect. And, and, and so, so Elaine, we need to take a little break, but I want I have a whole bunch more. I'm so excited, um, and I know all of you out there are excited, too, because we're going to hear more ideas about ways to offset some of the challenges about touch and learning about the healing power of touch and reducing that sense of touch deprivation uh, when we come back. So stick around. We'll, we'll be back just after the break. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com Audiobooks gives you instant access to over 50,000 of the best sellers and hottest book titles in romance, mystery, fiction, and many other genres. Just visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Audiobooks to get started. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 445-6463. Four four five six four six three. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. If you're just tuning in, we're here with the author of Massaging Your Baby, The Joy of Touch Time. She's also the executive director of Touch Time International, a speech and language pathologist, uh, Dr. Elaine Fogel Schneider. Um, but we're talking about a really big topic. We're talking about touch and the healing power of touch. And um, just before the break, we, we just started uh, uh, you know, touching upon, so to speak, um, uh, the the implications of this COVID and and uh, but in particular, uh, Dr. Elaine was starting to share a little bit about what are some of the other ways to get our touch needs met when we're when we are needing to be six feet uh, six feet away from others. And so, do you want to carry on with that? You mentioned pets are a great a great resource, and you started to also talk about baths and showers as a way to to massage yourself. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that we keep ourselves feeling those sensory input and. You know, if we're not able to, if we're standing so far away, we don't get that anymore as we used to be able to shake someone's hand. And uh, believe it or not, the ability to shake somebody's hand and to feel that other human, that contact, um, you told a lot about another person when you shook their hand. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't have that ability right now with our uh, pandemic. Um, and so, And other things that are important to do also, um, you know, you can actually do a little bit of your own back and shoulder massage as well. Um, and you can do that with somebody in your family, um, if, or you can do it your, for yourself as well, where you have that ability to just um, take a, you know, stand or sit in a nice easy chair and, uh, you know, you can use some natural oils if you'd like and just massage your own skin, your own shoulders. Um, just again to release the tension. I know everybody's walking around a lot of, with more tension, with more worry, with more concern. And uh, using touch is, is a natural healer. It's a natural relaxer uh, when it's done in a nurturing way. So it's so important to maintain that throughout the day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I was just talking the other day with a, a, one of our other previous guests, and uh, who's now uh, become a friend of mine, um, uh, Dr. Jennifer Fraser, and she was asking about um, uh, you know, other, uh, you know, other in terms of um, alternative ways to engage the brain. She's very much into neuro, neurosciences, and was wondering about gaze, like eye gaze. Is, um, is are there any of the same um, mechanisms activated through? That meaningful, you know, you talk about how cats give us eye kisses. Uh, when you really look into someone's eyes, and I know babies really need that eye-to-eye contact for developmental reasons and neurologically. And I was wondering if you could speak if there is anything you know about, if there's overlap or if it's just totally a different mechanism. Well, actually, that looking into the eye of another human, what we're finding in the research there is that the side of the brain, the right side of the brain, is being developed when um, that part of the, the the eye gaze is occurring. And so we're finding uh, I, some of the other research I'm doing in the area of screen time and screen use, um, mm-hmm. talking about the lack of eye contact with another human being and what that does. It doesn't really enliven that the empathy, that right side, the emotion. That's the part when you're looking the right the eyes with the right eyes at each other. That's what's happening. The right side of the brain is being enriched. It's being um, enlivened. It's being uh, more nurtured. And so uh, it's it's really important to continue with whatever other means of engagement that we have that will not interfere with what we're supposed to be doing, which is not touching things six feet apart. At least there are ways that we can still be communicating and interacting that are still enriching our brain. And I don't know about you, but there are so many people when they're on their smartphones, they're looking down, they're not looking at you. Uh, again, the lack that breaks the in- connection, that breaks connection between humans. And so it's really important to have that eye gaze, um, even if you're not able to touch. <laughs> it's important yeah, to be looking yeah. at people. Even yeah. if you, you know it's better than not, so 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I've even heard of uh, people, um, uh, a friend of mine, their their niece is, works at a grocery store as a, as a um, teller, and, and they were saying that that uh, it was really one of the benefits of, of the COVID was in lockdown was that, you know, people's big event was to go grocery shopping, and um, and they were there was more eye contact that they were noticing that the customers would look at them and actually see them and and um, say kinder words and, and acknowledge. And there was it was an interesting an interesting side effect of of that with with that eye the eye gaze and and um, appreciating each other uh, even more so than just the the devices. Yeah. Well, that yeah. that's real novel because I think so many of us are so now, especially with this pandemic, we're so much more uh, dependent on on our screens uh, for work, for shopping, for family connections. We're doing so much through that screen time that, sure. Um, sure. again, that eye gaze is so important. If, if we don't have that physical touch, we need yeah. to have another way of making those connections. So yes, many people yes. feel so isolated. Yes. And, uh, well, you know, one of the things that you were you were wanting to talk about today, and I think uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to hearing more about, is 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 you know about the skin and um, the importance of the skin, and and um, for you know as we were talking about even the self massage, the baths, and that. Can you talk a little bit more about the science of the skin and and um, and uh, you know help help us understand more what. You know how it fits into the big picture. Yes, I, well, you know, we. This is, I think, one of the, the the senses that's not really talked that much about, and yet the sense of touch is really the first sense that's developed in utero, um, and it's really through the touch sense that communication develops with families. It's also the fact that the skin, the nerves, the mind, they're really just layers of the same cells. Um, mm-hmm. So what we find out, what we find out is that, um, th- that we have the skin surface of the brain is really like the deepest layer of skin. And, you know, even in six weeks or less than an inch long, an embryo can feel the light stroke on an upper lip. So it's so sensitive, and it really brings so much information into uh, the brain, into the body. There's more than 3 million cells in just a patch of skin that could be the size of a bottle cap. Um, Mm -hmm. So this is really very important for us to understand that, you know, it's like I say, your skin is your best friend. It keeps everything together. But there's more than that. It's it's really when you're touching your skin, you're like touching your brain because it's yeah. made out of the same cells. I think that's a so, really important a really important bit. Uh, we've had quite a few people on the show talk also about the gut and the gut microbiome, and you know the skin has a microbiome, but also the the gut is really the skin. It's like a big donut, the skin that's just inside of our body. And then, as you're talking about, and then it, you know the same kind of cells then wrap around the brain. Um, so some people may be like, well, why is it that you know certain doctors say certain supplements are helpful for the- for you know, for the brain and for the the gut and for the skin, how can that be? And I think that you're <laughs> touching upon that, uh, you know, right right now. And and um, but we, folks, we need to take another break. Um, we're going to have more delicious oh. learnings with uh, Dr. Elaine when we return. So stick around. We'll be right back. Okay. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yum. Foodforliving.com. You have too little time to shop. 
So try Farm Fresh to you. They deliver organic food the way nature intended. Delivered straight to your home or office. Economically. Visit our web advertiser page and click on Farm Fresh to you now. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. If you're not in the U.S., listen up. SureTrader is one of the most trusted and reliable names in share trading. With 6 to 1 leverage and other perks, SureTrade is the best for penny stocks and day trades. To find out more, visit our advertiser page and click on the SureTrader banner. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Here today with award-winning champion of children, speech and language pathologist Dr. Elaine Fogel-Schneider, uh, talking about the importance of touch. And, um, yeah, we're talking about also alternatives, you know, the importance of touch, and uh, but alternatives of ways to keep in touch and how important that is. Um, Elaine, would you be willing to talk a little bit more? Because there's, there's uh, you know, we're talking about some of the research, and, and so some of the uh, research findings about, well, you know, the impact of touch on on specific health ailments. Sure, there's there. We know that um, touch is really great for you know lowering blood pressure, for example, by having nurturing touches. That uh, when we have that light pressure massage, the heart rate is slowed, and um, EEG patterns can show greater relaxation during uh, that or following that nice, soft, but firm stroke. Um, It's often used, as you were saying before, you know, to treating pain. Um, And things like uh, what we see people that have had um, maybe even HIV, uh, where they've noticed that after the massage, some of the cells that uh, were being killed off are now regenerating uh, after some of the massage therapy. Uh, we find out that also um, I had a little boy that I was working with, and um, every morning he would get up and his legs were hurting. He was, you know, having growing pains, and um, he would actually bend. His mom would massage his legs, and uh, he would feel better. And so it became a little ritual for him and his mom to every morning when he woke after he woke up for him to say point to his legs and you know have his mom massage the legs again helping and soothing the pain uh, from his legs we know that children for example have many more what we call these Meisner corpuscles and uh, with that um, like children that are up to three years of age they're, they've got more sensory receptors um, per little square millimeter on their skin than do older people. And so that's why so many little kids, when you're touching them, you know, they might feel they get ticklish or they feel pain so much more than the adults because of that, more of that sensitivity of their sensory receptors. So there's just um, more and more data every day about touch with, you know, whether it's with HIV, the importance of using massage, or just looking at um, people that have cancer, uh, finding the differences for those uh, people, the ways of relaxing them and uh, chronic pain um, that we find that with the studies, again, that they may not be... um, They may be unresponsive to any surgical or pharmacological intervention, but then with the touch, 
they seem to have that a little bit of relief. So we're finding many, many more ways of using touch for stress reduction, pain reduction, um, and then again, as I mentioned before, things like depression and anxiety. And mm-hmm. if there's just so many of the, you know, the brain is, um, the brain's just releasing all these feel good <laughs> chemicals mm-hmm. that just, it, it's just an overall relaxer. Yeah. And so it's and, real and- important. And, you know, I I actually went through a three-year program uh, studying uh, to become a certified integrative energy healer. So learning something about healing touch or therapeutic touch or or Reiki or some of those things, uh, non-local healing and that. I'm wondering, um, because you talk about the touch receptors and uh, how, you know, even, I don't know if you've ever experienced those things, but, uh, you know, the... The impact of that, where yeah, it might be, it can be maybe six feet away or more, and still mm-hmm. perhaps activate some of those. Do you know much about that, or any research around uh, around some of those uh, energy based um, kind of working with the electromagnetic field? Well, I I don't have much of uh, information on the electromagnetic fields. I know a little bit more about magnetic resonance imaging, <laughs> like oh, okay. MRI. Of course, of course, well, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no worries because that's that's another. I, I just as we we're talking, I just realized. Oh yeah, you know when you're getting that um, someone that doesn't even touch you, but you feel as though they are. Um, if, yeah, you know, and actually training. one of the things I always show when I do my training for it instant massage work is I demonstrate some of that uh, about the importance when you just put your hand away from your body and then Mm -hmm. you can actually, if you just sit there and concentrate, you can actually feel the heat of your own skin and it doesn't even have to be touching your your body. So you get more of an awareness of that, of that energy field. So, yeah, there is much of that that happens in the work I do when I instruct on instant massage work. Right. Well, and I was just out thinking as you're saying that too. Even being by something, other sens- sensual or sensory uh, inputs like a fireplace, where you feel the heat come from that, it's another way to touch. You know, your skin can get touched in, a, in an alternative way with that heat, and um, maybe mm-hmm. even things like a, a sauna. I'm not sure if, if like infrared saunas, if they um, um, activate some of the same receptors or not. Do you know anything about that by chance? Um, I. I... Must say, I don't know that. No, okay, much and I don't either. It's just, uh, yeah, this is now a time, I uh, you know, up, <laughs> with, yeah, with this pandemic. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But with this pandemic, it's really um, yeah, an opportunity for us to get extra creative and and uh, you know thinking about these things. But but you were talking about mm-hmm. your courses real quickly. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about Touch Time? Because some of them might be interested. Uh, I'm sure many of you are probably interested in learning more about Touch Time and also. Um, the books you've written, both um, related to touch as well as uh, confidence and self-esteem, and you know, talking about special needs children um, and uh, you know, helping you know just uh, parents and and everyone to to help each other better. Well, thanks. I have um, several books that are uh, Amazon best-selling books that talk about guidebooks for parents um, to help them with their children that might have either kids with learning differences or uh, uh, actually a book that talks about how to raise calm, inspired, and successful children using just like seven steps. Um, actually, touch and massage is one aspect of that, uh, something really nice to do, you know, when you make connections with your kids. Um, and so I, I do a lot of training for um, professionals for uh, using the sense of touch is one of their extra tools, like a toolkit that they can bring uh, to families that help the families engage, help the families relax, uh, help them communicate one in- to one another. Um, so I have a training that I provide. Some of them are been a little bit modified now because of the pandemic. Things are online more than they were before. Uh, but just getting people to be more aware of the touch sense and how they can incorporate that into either their own practices or their own family life, uh, the value of that um, day by day. And the books are really important, too, you know, that I've uh, provided for families. They're like guidebooks, and so those are available on Amazon.com. And um, I have my website also that people can come to to get more information 
uh, which is askdrelaine.com, and uh, there's a lot more information there, some tension tamers they can use that are a little free gift for everyone. More information on that area. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Elaine. Thank you so much for having me, Teresa. It's been a pleasure. and again, to learn more about Dr. Elaine and to find her her um, her websites and her books and all that good stuff, you don't have to worry about trying to remember her her, her Facebook or her whatever her uh, um, social media pages and all that. Um, and also about you know information uh, about all of our incredible guests uh, and loads of uh, free wellness resources. Visit Teresa's Wellness Hub at teresanicasio dot com. Um, we need to take one more break. This will be the final break uh, for a while in um, of this show with me. Um, when we come back, I'll be sharing with you about where I'm going to be um, after finishing today's live show and the lowdown of what's uh, to come after the show. Uh, stick around. We'll be right back. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all in one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. For the best in business class travel, count on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air has the best price guarantee, 24-7 customer service, and easy booking online or by phone. To experience your hassle-free journey, start by going to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Cheapo Air. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, Food is medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net Welcome back to the special Bone Voyage Dr. Teresa Nicasia show. <clears throat> As I was thinking about what to say at the end of today's show, I have to say it's been uh, it's kind of emotional, it's, it's uh, kind of exciting, and um, I wanted to do a proper farewell to you as, as uh, it's, it's really just sort of a farewell because I'm not really going anywhere, as you will see. Um, but I wanted to also share with you a little bit about, um, you know, what I'm doing, what led me to do this and that sort of thing because obviously this is an extremely difficult decision. Um, um, we've had, this is our 80th show today, so it's kind of a nice round number to be ending with. Um, and But, you know, with 350,000 of you listening every month, um, I know that you've been able to benefit by finding hope um, and enjoying these incredibly wonderful guests. It's 
it's been, you know, selfishly, it's been um, an opportunity for me to celebrate many of my personal heroes as well as, uh, you know, many of them being leading change makers in the world and helping them to share their messages uh, about about life, about about health, about the environment and all that good stuff. So, well, you know, I didn't take this lightly, this decision. Um, it really, uh, you know, if we really come to the, the to the, bra- the brass tacks of it, um, it came from a really personal place and a place of um, uh, really about self-care for me and my family and just that opportunity to, to reground, reboot, and so forth. And so a lot of you listening who don't know about 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 uh, why that might be particularly relevant is um, they don't know my story, haven't read the book, or heard you know seen different things about that. <clears throat> um, about 11 years ago, I was diagnosed, and I mentioned this a little bit here and there in some of the shows, but I was diagnosed with um, celiac disease uh, at age 45, and after not realizing, not you know, it was already there my whole life, but didn't realize it. And, and so that actually started this whole journey, my yum journey, um, again, about 11 years ago. And um, what I didn't realize was what I started to create and co-create was um, um, became a bit of a runaway train. It developed a life of its own, um, very exciting, very wonderful, and very meaningful. And so it's been a, a, a you know a, a time of transformation. And um, as many of you may may really laugh when you learn this, because most people are surprised to learn that I'm actually. A very private person. So here I am on these on this radio show and doing all these you know on all these different kinds of shows and and um, out there. But I'm actually a really private person. So so uh, you know after these last six years in particular since the release of my book, which fortunately has touched many of your lives and, and thousands of people's lives. Um, I'm at 56 here, and I'm I'm really feeling that it's time for me to go to a, a bit of a quieter, simpler place. But I've already got my, my my toe in the ointment, so don't worry about that because in addition to me spending time in my garden and in nature and with my family and in my private practice, um, I'm still going to be out there. I'm still going to be um, particularly on social media and on my website and on other Another another media uh, outlets. I will be sharing um, more about hope and wellness, and and uh, especially on social media. If you're already if you're already uh, uh, connected with me on social media, if you're not, do it. Um, uh, I've got lots of goodies that I love to share about innovative solutions, about health, wellness, and the environment. Kind of like the stuff we do here, uh, inspiration and all that stuff. Um, I do probably the, the bulk of what I do. My favorite uh, platforms on social media are LinkedIn and, and Facebook, and many many different streams on Facebook, as as you will see if you haven't. Uh, but I also do do a bit in, in Instagram and on Twitter. So uh, if you are in any of those social media outlets, I'd love to um, yeah have, love to be connected with you. The other outlet where I'm doing, um, I've been doing, where uh, a fair bit, but not nearly as much as I would like. I'm, I'm not the most tech savvy person, uh, but is YouTube. So basically, I've, it's been a, a place that I've been um, with, a, with the help of Jane, uh, Jane Gruber, who I mentioned earlier today. Uh, she's been helping with getting up, downloading, and uploading um, the. The shows, the pre- past shows, I've gotten fallen a little bit behind in getting those um, live and such. But they, most of them are there, and they will soon all be there. Uh, but in addition to that, all of the yum things, of uh, cooking demos, um, t- uh, talks that I've done, or just sharing highlights or gardening tips, uh, uh, just a lot of fun, whimsical things that I do. But uh, and you know, wellness tips. But in addition, I have probably at least as much, if not more, of other people's really good stuff that I've been curating on that on that site um, to to have again like my website which I'll get to in a minute um, a lot of just really wonderful wellness types of resources and and some are yeah whimsical fun you know pet videos that are fun and that kind of thing so so YouTube is another resource that I'm hoping to to give a little bit more time to after we finish here 
And as I mentioned, the uh, TeresaNicasio.com website, that's T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O.com. Um, it's going to continue to be my primary hub of uh, free wellness resources information. Um, I created that, again, about four years ago, that particular website, because I was really wanting to be able to create a place for anybody to be able to access good stuff, because uh, not everybody can afford or has access to psychologists, or functional medicine doctors or other other great resources um, that I've been able to be bringing together because of my own journey. So, um, yeah, those are some of the big things. And then the other thing is once I've had some of this rest and restoration, which I so, so need at this point, um, my heart, I have, I have several books I want to write uh, um, that will fill your spirit and also hopefully inspire your mind and thoughtfulness. Um, and, of course, I'll be continuing to be a guest on other people's shows. I'm going to be on the um, uh, the first of a new TV show, TV series, um, even later this month. And I'm going to be continuing to write as a columnist for magazines, for Flourish and other magazines and other and other media outlets. So that's all good stuff. Um, but I, I really also want to give you a proper a proper goodbye here, and I want to start by just thanking you, thanking all of you for your love, um, for your loyalty, um, and for tuning in these past four years uh, to this little haven of hope, uh, inspiration, and education. Um, And I want to thank again our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for making this program possible for the past three years. And as I mentioned a little earlier in the show, um, this program will continue to be available. And uh, like I said, um, I was so excited they knew that uh, uh, HealthyLife.net, they have started a subscription service. I don't know exactly how it works, but apparently all of my last years, uh, last four years of, of shows will be available to you if you sign up for that. And in addition, as I mentioned, on the YouTube and also via my website, they're all right there. So so there's no need to lose access to all of those, the, the good stuff that is there. And, um, uh, you know, with regard to... With regard to those past shows, uh, you probably know if you haven't yet checked it out, I create a, a profile page with all kinds of other resources for each and every show and the guests. Tons of other stuff. So... I wanted to end by leaving you with a poem that I wrote uh, called Endings and New Beginnings. I wrote it in 2013 that I thought was fitting for today um, and this time of transition. Like the sun setting as a divine exhale, which carves the space and creative darkness required for the birth of a new day and hope and breath that only a new sunrise can bring. May this time of pause at the end of the year be an invitation for reflection and setting and shedding, making space for the new life and possibilities deep within us to courageously emerge and dance in the light. I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Thank you so much for being a part of my life and for all that you are and all that you do to serve yourself, others, and the planet. Working and dreaming together, we really can make the world a better place. Namaste.